touch the letter, everyone. Uh, present for the intermediate reading class. So today uh, we're going to practice reading by reciting the fifth verse of the first chapter of Psyche Pandita's excellent, excellent teachings or excellent speech. And uh, like usual, uh, like usual, we are going to first. I will be reading each syllable, each word, each line, each, uh, and then the entire verse. And then afterwards, uh, we have we will either select or I will have a uh, people who will read after me. So, so any one of you who wants to read after me, we can do that. Uh, okay. So uh, before we begin our class, we start with the verse. So today it's a verse of dedication, uh, which is towards Tumi Sambuddha, or the son of Anu. Tumi Anu, known as the son of Anu. So Tumi Sambuddha, uh, who was one of the uh, one of the two main ministers of King Songzin Gampo, who is also credited for his achievement of structuring and finding the structure or system of Tibetan writing and Tibetan grammatical system. So he's also the first scholar of Tibet and uh, He's also one of the seven great ministers of Tibet. So in Tibet, there were seven great ministers with different kings who came during different kings. Uh, in total, we have 39 or in some books, 40, in some books, 41. So uh, depending on, so in between uh, the King Chusong Dozen, and the King Chirabachi, there were two kings who didn't live for that long, who died at a very young age. And so, therefore, depending on whether we, it's not that they hadn't uh, been, but they weren't enthroned, they did uh, take the throne, but they didn't live for a very long time. So therefore, in some of the history books, they are considered uh, 41, in some 40, and in some 39. So in total, there are, so let's say, 39, teach, uh, 10, 39 kings in, uh, in, the, in, in the history of Tibet. And some of these kings were blessed with very intellectual, and very devoted ministers. And seven of these ministers, they, each of them at each time, uh, they either had great achievements in making the lives of the citizen easier by introducing systems which aid the citizen in ways of trade and living. And some of them introduced uh, the major major sciences in Tibet from India. So for example, Tumisam Buddha, he is credited for uh, bringing in uh, or structuring the under structuring the Tibetan system of the science of grammar. So, and then uh, for these achievements, these great achievements, there are seven of these ministers. So one of them is Tumisam Buddha. So with a verse of dedication to to me some Buddha. We're going to begin our class. So, Kangjong Kebe Tangbo Anupu, Hajang Ludwe Chebe Zanglun Chok, Gebo Songzin Gekar Ngapala Ngaparla Labo Kungi Shima Ke Ize Ke Kangjin Yuna Gede Shina Che Yu Gekar Pabe Denche Pabgyurze Tov Sangye Chegi Nyingbor Kowar Nyu so this final line I have done 
uh, what I have done is that I have added this this uh, particle la in order to in order to satisfy the amount of syllable that is required in each line, so so that it won't sound uh, it won't sound incorrect or it won't sound incomplete. So, Kangjie, Kangjong Kebe Tangbo Anupu. The first, the, the, the one who is known as the first scholar of the land of snow, or the son of Anu, which is Tumi Sambuddha, Hajang Lodu Chebe, Zhang The great, uh, the great, or one of the great uh, ministers with great intellectual capacity. Great intelligence. The one who was commanded, the one who was asked by the King Son Zengambo to go to India and study the, the, the great five sciences, the five major sciences and the five minor sciences. And so, by going to India, establish the system of writing and reading, which is the foundation of all practices. You owe uh, to me, Sambuddha, you are, you are the most gracious to the land of snow. You translating the treaties, the precious, the Arya treaties from the land of the Aryas. Because of which the people of the land of snow were able to comprehend the teachings of the Buddha. And now if I say that Tumi is has not been grateful, that Tumi has not been gracious to us, how is this even valid and possible? Meaning that Tumi is definitely one of the most great most gracious to the land of the snow. So uh, with this verse, so these two verse as a dedication, uh, we begin today's class. So this this particular verse, as you will see, is uh, currently there are only two verses, so it's not complete. It still needs to continue. There are things that uh, need to be written. So these are just two verses. And so uh, when, when it will be completed, then the verse both in Tibetan and the translation uh, will be uh, posted on the channel. Okay, so uh, now this uh, with this, these two verse of devotion and dedication to the uh, great scholar, uh, to me some Buddha, we begin our class with most gracious, uh, most uh, wonderful and auspicious uh, intentions. So uh, I will be repeating each syllable four time, each word four time, each line four time, and then the entire verse four time. And then afterwards, we'll have someone reading after me. Then we will go to the English translation. Uh, and then uh, example statements, and finally, uh, the verse of dedication, the final verse of dedication. So, Lo, 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 Tu, Tu, Tu. To. So, uh, we have we had this word uh, in previous verses, and when we like we already discussed that the pronunciation of this word, when we do the when we pronounce this particular syllable, uh, it's important to understand that we should not over uh, emphasize on the word, meaning that you we shouldn't over pronounce the word in a way that. Uh, Sometimes the rolling R sound is pronounced quite strong. So instead of low tr, it becomes low tr, tr, 
tr. So r, the sound of the r becomes quite strong in here. So we try to keep the sound quite subtle. Lo tr, lo tr. So uh, one reason because we're trying to uh, we're, tr we're, we're trying to avoid stretching the sound of tr, tr uh, because we have sa as a suffix. So it functions in this way that it what it does is that it uh, concludes the sound or it shortens or consigns us, uh, the sound becomes shorter. So therefore, uh, we understand that instead of uh, having the r sound, which in a way, what it does is that it creates an extension of the sound of r after ta. So in a way, it stretches the sound. So here we need to contain the sound as much as possible to sound, to make the sound of ta as subtle as possible without overly uh, emphasizing on the sound of tr. So it becomes lo tr, lo tr, and not lo tr, tr. Instead of tr, we just pronounce it as lo tr, lo tr, tr, lo tr, lo tr, lo tr, lo tr, lo tr. chen. Chen, 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 po, 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 chen po, chen po, chen po, chen po, ku, 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 and similar to this case, please avoid. Uh, X overly pronouncing the word. So what happens is that in some cases, when you pronounce it uh, with uh, unnecessary uh, emphasis, what it does is that instead of sound, instead of making the sound of ku, it becomes kut. So you see that the sound of the ta becomes too bold here. Kut, kut. Similar with the sound tak, it's ta. So if you're overly pronouncing it, what happens is that the sound of ka becomes overly emphasized. So it instead of being tak, ta, it becomes tak, tak. So ta. Similarly, ku and not kut. Ku. 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 Na. Na. Na, na, kuna, 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 kuna. So the sound of ga. So here we see that the sound of ga comes because we have the had a letter ra. So if we pronounce this, put this this character, this uh, consonant by itself, it's ka. But now if we have the had a letter ra or the crown join letter ra, it becomes ga. So. So let me pronounce this in a character form, so each character reading. Ra, ra khata ga. So you can see that it's ra khata and not ra gata. So it's ra khata ga. Because it has this crown letter ra, the sound becomes more bold. Instead of ka, which is a subtle and soft sound, it becomes ga, which is more bold. So ra khata ga, ra khata ga. Rakata gasham chuku, Rakata gasham chuku ta ku. Ra, Rakata ga, Rakata gasham chuku, Rakata gasham chuku ta ku. Ra, Rakata ga, Rakata gasham chuku, Rakata gasham chuku ta ku. So, ku na, ku na, ku na, ku na. Young, 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 young. Lot chempo kuna young. Lot chempo kuna young. Lot chempo kuna young. Lot chempo kuna young. So the reason why I did the character reading for this is uh, to emphasize the transition uh, when 
uh, we add a header letter or a crown letter, how it changes the very sound of this foundation of name. Okay, so talk, 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 talk. So I'll do just one once the character reading la la hapta ha la hapta ha kal hak 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 hak. So try to make uh, try to keep the sound of ka as subtle as possible. No need to make it a whole sound and into hak hak. If it becomes hak. It is uh, incorrect. It's 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 not incorrect by the composition of the characters. It's incorrect because the sound becomes too bold at that point, and uh, so we try to keep it subtle. So, hak, 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 but make sure that it sounds like ka at the end and not ka. Hak, 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 hak. So hak. Par, 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 hak par, hak par, hak par, hak par. So also observe, we have been discussing this for previous classes, that the sound of the R as a rolling R sound, R, will be emphasized greatly while reading it in the syllable reading method, because in which we're trying to uh, po polish the sound of each syllable to the greatest of our uh, ability. So therefore, we exaggerate certain sounds. But when we, we do the word reading and the line reading, what we do is that the sound becomes less uh, emphasized, less exaggerated. So hakpar becomes hakpar, 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 hakpar. Lo, 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 tu, 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 lo, tu, lo, tu, lo, tu, lo, tu, top, 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 then. Then, 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 top ten, top ten, top ten, top ten, top ten, cure, 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 cure. Hakbar lotru top ten kur. 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 G. G. G G Tak 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 Kel Kel Kel, kel, po, 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 kel po, kel po, kel po, kel po, te, te.
Pa. Pa. Tepa. 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 Na. 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 Tepa na. Tepa na. Tepa na. Tepa na. Rita kelpo 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 tepa na. Lang. 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 Chen. 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 Lang chen. Lang chen. Lang chen. Lang chen. Chi. 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 Wo. 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 Chi wo. Chi wo. Chi wo. Chiwo. Nyur. 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 Tu. 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 Kem. Kem. Kem, kem, lang chen, chu wu nyur tu 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 kem, lo chu, Chen ho gu na yang hak par lo chu top ten chur ri tak kel pu te pa na lang chen chi wo nyur tu kem. Lo chu chen po gu na yang hak par lo chu top ten chur tu kem. Lo chu chen po Guna yang hak par lo chu top ten kyur. Rita kya po che pa na lang chen chi wu nyur tu kem. Lo chu chen po guna yang hak par lo chu top ten kyur. Rita kya po che pa na lang chen chi wu nyur tu kem. Lo chu chen po guna yang hak par lo chu top ten kyur. Top ten kyur. Rita kelpo trepa na. Lang chen chi wu nyur tu kem. So, with this, I have read this entire verse four times. Now, we'll have someone reading after me. So, did we actually decide who was going to read? Ten. 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 
चल I'm sorry, can I, I can't hear you. Young. Young. Young, 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 Hakper Hakper Lotu 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 Top 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 Then 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 then, 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 top 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 then, good, 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 top then, 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 good, Top ten cure. Hakper water 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 top ten cure. Re. 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 Tap. Tuck, Ritak 
So, uh, a little bit of here, which is K. Okay. 
ETE, other than that, uh, it is uh, pronounced correct. Mm -hmm. Tick. Just as one. So let us take a look at this. So, pa. Pa. Pauka. Pauka. Pauka ratata. Pauka ratata. Pauka ratata jambute. Pauka ratata jambute. Pauka ratata jambute sa te. Pauka ratata jambute sa te. Pa. Pa. Tepa. 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 So uh, please work on this a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the, everyone can hear me, right? Is everyone able to hear me? It seems that some are not able to hear me. Is everyone able to hear me? Really? Ah, not so. Okay, so, uh, so today uh, we're done with the reading. So, uh, who would? Uh, so before I continue with the translation, who would like to? Those who have not read till now, uh, uh, who would like to read uh, during the next class? So is there anyone who would like to volunteer for the next class? So is there anyone who has not read till now that wants to read during the next class? Anyone? Who hasn't read uh, before in, in, in the classes before that wants to read during the next class? Do we have anyone who wants to read? Lasso, uh, then, uh, okay, so then we will do it this. In next class, uh, we will have uh, two uh, people, uh, those who hadn't read. So one is uh, Evgeniela and the other is Ritala. So we'll have two people reading the sixth verse. Uh, so on Wednesday, Lasso. So now let me continue to the translation of the verse. So this is the translation by John T. Uh, Devonport from the book that we're using uh, as the basis of the understanding the English translation. So the translation states, so before that, let me just read this entire verse once. So when the very wise, so the English translation by John T. Devonport it states, when the very wise becomes destitute, their intelligence grows even stronger. When the king of beasts become hungry, it swiftly attacks elephant's head. So uh, it means that, uh, so here we have certain words such as the king of beasts. So the king of beasts, uh, is referred to the uh, lion. And so uh, this translation, it says that when the very wise, so one, when they become destitute, meaning that when they have certain type of circumstances, which leads them to be uh, in a state of destitute, being poor, being, uh, being in a state where they are down, be it um, and so here it's financially, but most probably uh, in any state in life where they are weaker, when they are down, when they are in certain circumstance, when they are not at their uh, utmost or the best of their ability. At that time, the very wise, their intelligence grows stronger, meaning that they will they will not be sitting there with uh, feeling. Uh, like without any plan or anything, what they will do is that their intelligence will grow even stronger and they will make a way to come out of this particular circumstance or scenario in whichever way possible. So when the very wise become 
destitute, their intelligence grow even stronger. When the king of beasts become hungry, so when the king of beasts is hungry, and hungry for many days, that they're quite, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite starving. So, they're quite starved, they're hungry. In that case, it swiftly attacks the, it attacks the head of the elephant, especially the crown. It attacks the crown of the elephant. Usually, uh, many of the animals in the forest, they're not uh, white. So, uh, here, uh, this is my take on the uh, translation. Though when the very mice, so though when the very wise becomes weak, so though, so at times when the very wise becomes weak, be it being destitute, being mentally, uh, mentally down, meaning that having certain worries or any sort of thing that comes to their mind, which makes them weak at that particular point. So when they're in a particular part of their life, when they are weak, the very wise, their intelligence especially grows stronger at that time, meaning that at that very time, their intelligence becomes much stronger because that is the time when they have to protect themselves, when they have to uh, make sure that they do not fall down the spiral to the very bottom. So they need to protect themselves. Thus, their intelligence at that time becomes stronger meaning that if they are alert, usually they become more alert. If they are uh, observ observant, usually they become more observant. If they are patient, usually they become more patient. So their intelligence grows stronger at that time. And these two, the first two lines is the meaning and the example. So because we're examining a wise, so this is how we examine if someone is wise or not. Because if uh, if a foolish, if a fool is in the similar state, what they will do is that they will, instead of uh, having a, uh, instead of their intelligence growing stronger, they will be greatly influenced by all the affliction, meaning that those fools will do anything and everything possible, which is which may not be the right way. They can see current misery, they see the solution, and then they see the solution for a very short time. Therefore, their intelligence, instead of being stronger, their the little ability to think that they have is thoroughly uh, influenced and corrupted by the afflicted mind, thus costing them even more trouble, even more pain, even more misery. So here. We have so that is an inferential. So that's the counter of what this is. That's an inferential understanding of the first two lines, which states that the wise, when they're in the state of becoming weak, uh, when they have became, uh, they they have become weak. Intelligence especially grows stronger, but in case of the fool, when they face certain weakness, certain point of weakness, instead of their intelligence growing stronger, they their mind starts getting corrupted by all the affliction. So their intelligence grows weaker. So this is the meaning. And then the example, the, the, the example provided by Saika Pandita for this too, is the last two line, which says, when the king of beasts goes starving. So being weak is similar to being starving, meaning that not only are they hungry, they are at a state of great misery. So this shows the degree of at which they are hungry. It's not that they're hungry, like for example, they are hungry that they can bear. If, they, if a lion is hungry, but they can bear being hungry, meaning that their hunger is not that severe, they would not attack an elephant. They will try to catch other, uh, they would try to catch other uh, animals in the forest. 
It is only in the very dire situation when they're going hungry, they're starving, that they take such measures of uh, food. And so when they are starving, when they go starving, uh, the, the beast of lion, it swiftly bites through the head of an elephant. So it just bites through the head of the elephant to take it down because that's the most effective, most efficient, and the most vulnerable part. So they can attack it and then bring it down. Otherwise, tackling them or biting their neck would be quite uh, not the most practical way to approach. So therefore, uh, the example of the wise man is given as the king of beasts, the lion. Similarly, the lion or the the, the lion is also uh, and uh, is also taken as an example of the one who is the most bravest and the most uh, the most bravest uh, of the man, the man, the lion amongst the men, which the Buddha is called the lion amongst the men. So therefore, the lion is given example here as the weak, uh, sorry, the, the wise man. The state of being weak is given as an example of going uh, to go to, to starve. And the growing of intelligence here is given as the um, strategy that the lion takes at that particular time to attack the elephant. So not rushing in like a fool, thinking of just the current state. They just think about all of the things that is possibly uh, things that may bring them to doom because it's an elephant. So they make strategy and bites through the head of the elephant to bring it down swiftly to make the hunting successful in the most efficient way. So this is the uh, this is the verse for today's reading class. Now let us go to the new words. So the first one is gu, which means to become weak. So keba, which means the wise. Lupo gu means body becoming weak. Body starting to become old and weak and frail. This is good. Keba lupu gunang. Shechar. Shechar means knowledge. Learning or knowledge. Sun means to have endeavor, to have resilience, to have the determination to work hard. Kala good means it is not possible, it never becomes weak. Where does it become weak? So the, this statement means the body of the wise may become old and frail, but the endeavor to continue learning never weakens. And so the verse for today's, the final verse for today, which usually is the verse of dedication, instead of this, I have uh, written a verse from the same chapter, which we will not be able to cover during this course, because we are going to have only nine lessons. So in the nine lessons, uh, now it's the fifth. So we have only four lessons. So we are going to be able to cover only four more words. So this verse will not be covered, but it's in the same chapter. So I have written it at the end. And it has quite the similar meaning to what has been written here. So, The body of the wise may become weak, but the endeavor, the resilience to continue learning, never weak meaning that they even learn when their body is incapable of keeping up with everything. Top then means strong, one with strength, one who has the strength, the power, strong. Nangi top then, nangi top then chi dunhang, chi top then chi dunhang. So, nang means inner. Then means strength or strong, the one who is strong internally. Chi dun. Chi then means one who is strong externally. So this statement means the one who is strong within themselves, meaning internally, those who have who are strong, they conquer, conquers the external world. They conquer everything in the external world because they themselves are strong within and have conquered the world inside so they're in internal world so they can easily conquer the world outside but the one who is strong externally is conquered by the external world so the one who 
has strength which just reflects externally. Those people do not conquer anything. They themselves are conquered by the external world, meaning that they go in, they go by the influence of the external world. Meaning that when the external world say that this is strong, they become that. When the external world say you have to have this to be strong, they become that. Instead of having the strength of conquering what is inside. So the one who have conquered what is inside and have become strong internally within themselves, they, they conquer everything that is external. Even without the intention of conquering anything. And the one who is strong just externally, meaning that they are capable of reflecting it externally, showing it externally, we don't have, we don't even can have to consider the fact that they can conquer anything externally. The fact is that they themselves will be conquered by the external world. Okay, so Ritak, wild animal, herbivores. So wild animal which eat uh, vegetation. So this is a simple statement. There is no poetic sense here. These two definitely they are written in a poetic sense. So payu ringola rita mangbutungyuto. Ringo means on top of the mountain. Payu means one's own country, nation, fatherland, motherland. So fatherland, motherland, and then mangbo means many. Rita means wild animals. Pongyutu means can be seen. So there can be uh, many wild animals seen on the top of uh, the mountains of my fatherland. So on the top of the, on the peak of the mountain lands of my fatherland, we can, there are many wild animals that can be seen. Rita Gyabu, king of bees. Rita Gyabu, uh, This has to be the purpose. So this is also written in a little bit of poetic sense. So it says states that all the beasts are conquered without needing to be conquered when the king of beasts roars. So when the king of beasts, that is the lion, when the when the king of the beast, the lion roars in the forest, all of the animals they needn't be conquered. They themselves become, become conquered. They themselves become tamed by hearing the roar of the lion. So this could be understand, understood in two ways. One, directly, literally, as it is written. One, if you understand it figuratively, in the understanding that if we consider Buddha to be the lion of man and the roar of the Buddha, meaning that his teaching on the true nature of things, when the Buddha states a truth, then all of those afflicted mind within ourselves, they just become tamed by themselves, needn't to be tamed, needn't to be conquered. Just by the roar of the truth, all of the lies, they submit to the truth. So this could be the figurative understanding. Okay, so deba, uh, which means to become hungry or to go starve. To starve or to become hungry. De kum de kum. Jo kum tunge tuin se sho. This is a word of uh, prayer. It's a word of uh, it's a word of request and prayer. States de kum tunge tuin se sho. May the suffering of starving and thirst be dispelled. That may no one Starve, no one be thirsty. Jiwo, which means the crown. Jiwo actually means the crown of the head. So at the center where we have the crown. So, Rangi, Jiwo, Lama, Kutinche. Gracious Lama at the crown of one's head. So this is a simple statement. Nyur, which means swiftly. This is also a verse of. Uh, it's a verse of request. It's a verse of intention. It's a verse in of auspiciousness. Intending the auspiciousness. Expecting the auspiciousness. 
symptoms from the Yudh Sangya Shuk. It means may all sentient beings swiftly attain enlightenment. And that's the meaning of Yudh, but a Yudh can also be used for more simple usage like what are the Yudh push in Patrosong, which means that the car went by swiftly. which means the car went by swiftly. So Nyurpo means swiftly. Nyurpo. Zinkong. So if you don't if you don't go to the class quickly or swiftly, the teacher will give us punishment. So your which means swiftly or quickly. Langche means elephant. There are many elephants in the forest. So uh, with this, we have uh, completed the fifth verse. The words are here. Some, uh, some of you are sending me the homework, the assignments that you have done. And uh, I have sent some feedbacks today for those who have sent me the assignments. So, those who are done with the assignment. So the assignment is just making sentences. So if you're able to make them, please make sentences for the words that are provided. And uh, so that because if you use these words, it will retain uh, and you can use these in the future. So those who are sending me assignment, uh, send you the feedbacks. Okay, now uh, before we're, uh, we read the final verse of dedication. But does anyone have questions regarding today's lesson about the verse, about the meaning of word? Does anyone have any questions regarding today's lesson? Okay, so if uh, there is no question, then uh, let me read uh, the final verse for today's class. So, uh, so this is the verse from the first chapter of Saikya Pandita's excellent teaching or excellent speech. And this is a very wonderful verse. It motiv motivates every one of us uh, to continue studying. So it says, Rikpa, which means, yeah, it means Rikpa means the one who is a scholar, the one who is a wise man. So Rikpa means a wise man. Nangpar means, Nangpar means the next morrow, the next morning, the moment where the sun shines tomorrow. Chiyanglap means even though the wise may, the wise knows that the next morrow, the next morning they are going to die, they will still continue to learn. Even though the wise may understand that they may die the next morning, today they will study or learn even though you may not become a wise per wise man or wise person in this lifetime it is like you have deposited everything that you have learned as an impression 
on your consciousness for the next life it's like uh, it's it's like you have deposited everything at a certain bank or at a certain vault or treasury treasury of knowledge that you have you have you have deposited everything there that you are learning right now not it is similar to how one with with uh, withdraws the money from the bank or takes back the money that they have uh, they have kept for, uh, for they have given for uh, given to someone for safekeeping so similar to how one withdraws the money that they have deposited in the bank one is depositing all of the things that they're learning in this lifetime in a bank that they can access when they when they are born in next life or in any life where they are capable of uh, cap capable of uh, apparent uh, cap capable of making those impressions apparent because there could be other things for example one might have those impressions but because of their uh, because of the the, the state that they're born in, the realm they're born in, even though with those impressions they're unable, unable to have the conditions to make these impressions apparent. So uh, this is a verse that I felt particularly uh, very motivational, when, meaning that it, it is something that uh, one and recite to themselves again and again while on the path of learning. Because it is very apparent that the path of learning and the path of becoming a wise man is a path that one has to walk alone. So sometimes there are so many factors everywhere that might hinder to recall it again and again. Sometimes you might feel, oh, these lessons are very difficult. Oh, what does this mean? What is so many words? I cannot pronounce this. I cannot pronounce that. You just recall this verse. You tell yourself, okay, I will try again. And again. You see, it will have impression over me. And then eventually I will read them in the most wonderful way and also understand them and will be able to teach others, which is ultimately the goal of this learning, is to teach others. So. Uh, therefore, with this most wonderful verse, uh, we are done with today's class. I so the so uh, those who have questions regarding uh, these, you may ask. Uh, you may ask them uh, in the group if you have any questions. You may ask them directly to me, uh, and I will try to I will try to provide answers. Today, I have been answering some questions it might take some time to answer so for those uh, who are who haven't got their answers uh, or if I'm taking too long to answer uh, I'm very sorry so I apologize for the delay but definitely answers will be provided it may take time but the answers will be provided feedbacks will be provided Many of you are sending me the recordings. I'm listening to them. Most wonderfully recited. I, I have sent the feedbacks in the group where you have sent them. I've sent the feedback personally to you, those who are sending it to me personally. So, uh, yes. So, therefore, uh, please continue uh, reading, reciting, revising, revisiting the uh, recordings, which will be available on YouTube. And also on the group for you, those who are, as who have, uh, who are capable to access through Telegram, we have the group where you can, uh, sorry, the channel. We have the channel in which you can go and access all the materials that are being sent after the class. The translation of these words will be present there, and then uh, we'll see. Most probably, uh, if we need uh, this this particular. Uh, this particular verse, like I said, there could be some a more verse added to it. Once they are done, uh, you may uh, you may access those, and then let's see uh, if there are need of more materials to be provided in the 
group or the channel uh, those will be provided accordingly so please make sure to recite and revise and any questions please ask them directly to me or in the class and uh, those who are joining me for the grammar class i will see you tomorrow those who are joining me for the reading class i'll see you on uh, wednesday so uh, with this uh, thank you very much for joining in and ah yes uh, when it comes to audio uh, when it comes to audio they will be uh, available on the channel as well as on the soundtrack uh, sorry the soundcloud uh, the soundcloud uh, account that we have for the heruka institute where we have the recording of uh, recording of all the uh, portions of be it of the uh, we had the thermal vocabulary class where we did the recitation of the uh, pragya paramita Pritaya sutra the heart sutra will be there and any other uh, recording that has been sent is available on soundcloud when it comes for when it comes uh, for the audio it is there on the soundcloud it will be there on the google drive of heruka institute and it is available on the channel when it comes to video it will be available on the google drive the channel the youtube and uh i think uh there are some videos on waimo uh waimo i think and then uh when it comes for uh, when it comes to the pdf they are available on the channel they are available on the google drive so you can access them there so i think uh, uh so our videos are not present in the google drive so yes so i think uh videos are not present in the google drive only on youtube and the channel so but uh in whole everything everything is present on the channel whatever is related to particular course all the materials will be present in the channel so you can access it, access it through the channel so okay so uh this is it for today and i should tell it to everyone thank you very much for joining in those who are joining me for grammar i'll see you tomorrow those who are joining me for reading I'll see you on Wednesday. Those who are joining me for both, I'll see you tomorrow.